Calvary Baptist Church, Santa Monica broadcast. We're so happy to have you here. My name is Edgar Blackman, and this is my wife, Kelly. Calvary is a church committed to sharing the loving gospel of Christ and serving a global community with compassion. Our pastor is Mac Moset, and we know that he would love to be your pastor as well. He loves God's people. He's a fantastic leader and a loving friend, and we know that he's so excited to have you here today. So. On behalf of all members of Calvary Baptist Church and our pastor, please enjoy the broadcast. Good morning and welcome to Calvary. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, Santa Monica. Hello and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, Santa Monica, California. Welcome. Welcome to Calvary. Welcome to Calvary. Good morning and welcome to Calvary. This is Pastor Lemuel Mac Mosette, pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church here in Santa Monica, California, and we are so glad you're here. Calvary is a church of love, embrace, peace, acceptance, and camaraderie, and we are glad that you have chosen this time to be a part of us. So sit back, relax, engage, and enjoy the service, and the next time you're in Santa Monica, be sure to stop by Calvary. And we give God praise as we continue in this glorious morning to lift him up and praise his most holy and righteous name. I invite you to the book of Philippians chapter 2 as we begin our call to worship beginning at chapter 5 the apostle paul reminds us of these words when he says in his letter to the church at philippi let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. As we come together during this time, I would encourage you, wherever you are, if you are watching with a friend or a family member, in the comfort of your home or wherever you might be, safely grab hold of a loved one as we pray for our city, our state, our region, our country, our world. 
as we lift up those who struggle for justice, for health, for healing. We're going to pray right now. We know that God will do what he said he will do. And so we thank him right now for his delivering power. Let's bow our heads as we approach his throne of grace. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We acknowledge you as an all-powerful, all-loving, all-healing, all-embracing God. We thank you right now because you've been good. We thank you right now because even in our darkest days, you have said in your word that you would be with us. And oh God, that is comforting to us in the times in which we currently sojourn. We stand, O oh God, facing the injustices of our time, realizing that these things are not new, but knowing that you are a deliverer and so we put our trust fully and completely in you. We stand before you with hearts and bodies stricken with disease and discomfort. We present every pain. We present every sorrow. We present every tragedy. We present every trial to you because we know you are a healer and you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And so we seek you right now for your hand of mercy, for your visionary grace, which sees us from afar off, recognizing our brokenness, recognizing our pride, recognizing the things that we hold on to, and recognizing the things that we seek to let go. Heal us from head to toe. Heal us from inside to outside. Make us the people that you want us to be. Make us the people who you have uh, exemplified in your word as your life has been chronicled as being one who sat next to those to whom no one would sit, spoke to those to whom no one would speak, heal those who have been deemed untouchable and worthless and valueless. Help us, oh God, to be the people who please you. As you said in your word that we would be known by our love for one another. So give us that love that runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. That love that values others beyond self. Bless our church and everyone who is connected. Bless the pastor who you have placed here, make him the pastor you want him to be. The husband, the father, the friend, the son, the brother who is pleasing in your eyes. We thank you, O oh God, for the testimony of faith in all that you are doing in your people. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning, Calvary. Are you blessed right now? 
we are just about to see the end of September. Hallelujah. We are moving on through 2020. I feel blessed this morning. I certainly hope that you do. We're going to give God some praise, give God some glory and some honor in this place right now. Because the Lord is blessing me right now. Come on and clap your hands right there where you are. Well, the Lord is blessing me right now. Whoa, right now. I said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. Let's say it again. Come on. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. The Lord is blessing me.
Good morning to Pastor Mosette, Calvary members, and Calvary friends. I'm Sharon Bennett, and I'm here with your announcements for the week of September 27th. Celebrating birthdays this week, we have Deaconess Maxine Smith on the 27th. We have Mother Flora Mosette on the 28th, and we have Sister Barbara Lodge celebrating on October 1st. Happy birthday. Again, we would like to remind you of our updated church meeting and worship celebration schedule. As we continue to pray through the COVID-19 pandemic, we are called to be faithful, not foolish. We are also called to love one another. All midweek meetings will continue to take place online, conference call, or other telemedia. The same time schedule will be maintained as closely as possible. 
please be sure to join us for our exciting virtual Bible study each Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Instructions for logging on can be found on the church website. And remember the password for logging in the Bible study is Calvary in all caps. Sunday morning Sunday school classes have resumed and you can join this engaging time of study at 9 a.m. each Sunday via Zoom. You may log on via the church website and if you don't have a Sunday school book, don't worry. A virtual copy of the lesson can be accessed on the church website. Please tell friends and family to join us. All are welcome to this hour of power. This is a great opportunity to discuss the word, ask questions, converse with everyone and grow. Sunday morning worship will take place at 10.30 a.m. and is shared online via Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube. Remember the web ID and password to log into Zoom are the same every Sunday through the end of the year. When you get to Zoom, always remember the password is CALVARY in all caps. We are aware of the ongoing reopening of businesses and various functions of our city. We are also aware of the CDC, state, and local new regulations regarding the opening of houses of worship. We are taking extreme precautions for our members and guests, especially our most vulnerable. We will inform you of our target date for reopening as soon as that information becomes available. Our online broadcast will continue even when we return to the physical church because our goal is to continue to make the loving gospel of Christ accessible from wherever you are. Your continued prayers are appreciated as we move forward safely. Let's remember to support our seniors by staying connected, especially to our seniors and those who may be unable to participate in our online services due to technical difficulties. If you're technically savvy, please reach out and help those who aren't. Also, please reach out simply to share a loving word of concern or an encouraging prayer. Remember, we are called to expressively and actively love one another. Never forget, we are one love, one faith, one family, one Calvary. Please be sure to visit our website as we continue to add resources, which include resources for food, grants, economic support, employment information, and beyond. Please share information with friends and family as our goal is to be as supportive as possible in these challenging times. You are also able to safely share your tithes, offerings, pledges, and other donations via the website. Although we weren't able to hold a service to commemorate our 100th church anniversary, we are still celebrating. Thank you to all who have pledged over $43,000. Over $37,000 of that has already been donated. We are trusting and believing that God will continue to touch the hearts of our Calvary family and friends to continue the journey as we raise at least $100,000 to modernize our facilities and enhance our technical capabilities to spread the loving gospel of Jesus Christ through robust media outreach. We will continue our media ministry to reach souls all over the world, even after we return to the sanctuary. Pledge cards and gold envelopes are available, and we're praying that additional members and friends will pledge at least $1,000 or any amount that God places on their hearts. Many thanks to those of you who have completed, are completing, and are extending your sacrificial giving to reach our goal of $100,000 in commemoration of our 100th anniversary celebration. Finally, you might ask yourself how you can help spread the word and grow the Calvary family in times like these. Well, one way to start is by liking our Facebook page, sharing the page, especially the Sunday morning broadcast on your timeline, and asking your friends and family to do the same. If you've been blessed by the worship experience, your friends and family might be as well. Let's use our social media as arms of loving embrace to do what Jesus said in Matthew 28:20. Those are the announcements for this week. I'm Sharon Bennett. Be blessed, stay safe, and I'll see you next week.
And again, we greet you in the name of our Lord. Uh, we are excited about worship as it continues to go forth. And uh, we are so incredibly thankful for the innumerable contributions of time and effort and creativity and talent and commitment that go into bringing forward this broadcast. The devil is always busy and oppositional and seeks to throw wrenches in your plans, but if your plan is God's plan, you don't have to worry not one bit about what the devil will try to do. Not to hold you long, I invite your attention back to Paul's letter to the church at Philippi as captured in our biblical canon Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, <clears throat> shares very poignantly these words. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Let me just ask you a question as we grapple with that text. In light of all that continues to combat us, what, what does it really mean? to be a Christian. What does it really mean to be a Christian? Call someone, send somebody a text, uh, drop them a note in the chat. What, what does it mean to really be a Christian? Let them know that the pastor is going to talk about based on Philippians chapter two, verses one through four. What what does it really mean to be a Christian? Uh, CNN reporter A.J. Willingham, uh, back in July, uh, started to compile photos and pieces of headlines to bring them into some focus. And his headline 
said, we regret to inform you that 2020 is only halfway over. And even though it feels like it's been going on for half a century, he talked about so many defining moments just from the standpoint of headline alone, innumerable photos that captured death and destruction, fires and storms, issues of political turmoil, behavioral and systemic and institutionalized acts of oppression and hatred and mitigation and separation. And he captured this and said, we are just halfway through the year. And already we have seen such impactful moments, such defining moments, some generational experiences and happenings that one could never perceive. And in this context, as I began to consider this word and consider my own life and the things that are going on with me and in my family and in our church and in our community and where we should go and where we should be and what we should say and how we should manage and how we should grapple with what's going on in our times, how we should address the uh, political turmoil, how we should address the uh, not solely civil unrest, but civil unrest as a result of injustices that have been levied on people uh, who are continually and historically oppressed, where we ask, should we be? And in this context, as I, I, I seek not to hide behind the robe and be locked behind the stained glass windows, but understand that my life is in tennis shoes and shorts and t-shirts and suits and ties uh, just like everybody else and without this this uniform that might seem like some level of elevation or separation or definition I have to ask what does it really mean what does it really mean to be a Christian We see injustice after injustice and what makes current injustices so tragic is that they are built on historic injustices. And, and in that context, I ask myself then, what does it really mean to be a Christian, every tragic death that is visible drips with the blood of the invisible, with the unseen, the unnamed, those who never rose to such elevation that their tragedy may have been captured on film and shared, what does it really mean then to be 
a Christian and knowing that, that injustice is not solely a matter of what we are seeing elevated before us so candidly, but it can be beautifully and uh, wrapped in policy and loopholes and legislation uh, that, that, it, that, it, that can live in high places. It can also be wrapped at the dinner table in the privacy of homes that discuss things that are negative and hateful and uh, it can be wrapped in teaching that, that brings young people who have been loving individuals and turned into hateful individuals. And all of this is going on around me and around you and with you and with me. And then I have to ask myself as I read my Sunday school lesson, as I prepare for Bible study, as I sing my hymns, as I prepare my sermons, as I work with my teams, as I raise my children, as I love my family, as I uh, work with my friends and family and church. What does it mean to be a Christian? In this time of challenge, in this time of strife, in this time of uncertain, uncertainty, in, in this time of worry, when, when you're up at night, when you're worried about your sons and your daughters, when you are preparing yourself for the worst and wondering what is going to happen Next, when you're afraid to even turn on the television because of what you will see or what you will hear, what does it mean to be a Christian? Well, let me just say this to you. Because we are a forward-moving people in that life in and of itself is Dynamic. What that means is that life moves in a forward direction until it stops for you and you transition from this earthly life. But as long as you are alive, time moves forward. And so to the Christian, those of you who claim Christianity, that you are you are of Christ. You have already processed, you have already gone through and accepted this reality that Paul presents to us in Romans uh, chapter 10. I always quote it uh, in, in the context of being saved and the immediacy of that. And we listen to to him as that begins in Romans 10, 8, when he says the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation and it's accepted and it is lived and it is embraced. And then we say, now what? After we've asked the question, do you believe that? Is that correct? Do you, do you make uh, Jesus Christ Lord and Savior over your life? Yes, I do. Now what? Because Reverend, I live in this context, I live in this reality. I, I, I live in this situation. I live in this circumstance. I live in this place. That everything that you see, I see. Everything that you hear, 
I hear, everywhere you go, I go, and, and every trial and tribulation you feel, I feel. So in that context, Reverend, what does it mean to be a Christian? Well, does it mean that, that I'm a martyr, that, 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 that uh, uh, what it means is that I am standing or I am uh, giving myself or I am uh, on the news, I am uh, in the march and, and you see me uh, go up in flames? No, 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 it, it cannot mean that. Yes, we stand. Yes, we march. Yes, we support. But that's not what being a Christian is all about. Paul speaks to us again when he writes to the church at Corinth and in that beautiful first letter, we use chapter 13 to talk about love, but verse 3 is captivating. When it speaks of martyrdom and, and how that works and is that love and is that Christianity, he says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And so then let me begin to break it down as we move out of this place. Paul talks about it in this context. When we think of those who have given themselves to Christ, it is not about them. It is not about their actions. It is about God's action. You see, the, the, the real Christian is not portrayed as standing up for God or defending the faith. Let me tell you why. Because God, nor the faith, neither one needs to be defended. God is God and the Christian first recognizes that as a fact, he stands alone. But how do we show then where we stand? The Christian puts his or her life in the hands of God. The Christian puts every circumstance, every situation, in the hand of God. And that is why very often the Christian might look passive. The Christian might look weak. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. The Christian, from the standpoint of the world, might not look strong. The Christian might not look active. The Christian's actions might not be charged with the great nobility by the world's standards. But the Christian is patient. The Christian endures because the Christian waits on the deliverance of God's hands in God's way according to God's promises and in God's time. The Christian realizes that God's promises don't always look like what the world 
perceives them to be. But the Christian has placed everything that he has, everything that she has in the hand of God himself. I love the fact, and I wish you would join us sometimes for our Bible study as we have walked through the book of Acts. And I remember when we were wrapping up chapter 27, where Paul is on a boat with over 200 other prisoners. And they're caught in a terrible storm. They get to the place where the sea is so rough and the clouds are so low that they cannot see the stars to navigate, to even know where they are going. The angel of the Lord visits Paul and says that he will be delivered as well as all of those on the boat, but he says that the ship won't make it. I wish I had a witness in the house. And so as they move forward, they do get to the place where the ship does run aground and begins to tear apart. And a long story short, the prisoners have to abandon the ship, jump over the side and swim to shore, but every one of them survives. The reality is that God through his angel had promised Paul that everybody would make it, but it wasn't going to look like what others thought it would look like, the Christian truly puts his hand and his trust in the hand of God himself through his son Jesus. Let me close here. Jesus is the greatest exemplar. You see, on the way to the cross, he looks weak. He looks powerless to those who are observing. It was so bad as Jesus makes his way to the cross that those who had been close to him ran away and separated themselves from him. Those who had committed to believing in him, had seen his miracles, now were in hiding. He doesn't look noble. He doesn't look like a king. He, he looks like he's giving up. He looks like he has lost. The, the, the gospel writers elevate this reality as they show him living out Isaiah 53 and 7, he was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not even open his mouth. I'm going somewhere. He does not struggle with those who are persecuting him, but he focuses on his father. We hear him praying in Luke chapter 22. Father, if you are willing to take this cup from me. Yet not my will, he says, but thy will be done. 
I tell you, the Christian has a focus. On the cross, Jesus addresses his father. When he asks, why have you forsaken me? Yet his final words are words of trust and focus and commitment. As he says, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. What does it mean to be a Christian? What does it really mean to be a Christian? You see, being a Christian pulls tightly on the thread that's connected to God himself through Christ. But it also speaks to the way that we approach daily life. The Christian understands that if we elevate it, the words that we read, we would begin to make a difference in the world. I hear Paul's letter in both frustration and encouragement when he says, if there's any consolation, any encouragement, if Christ is worth anything, if there's any comfort, any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like-minded. I wish I had a witness having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And then he said it. He says, he says, after you've accepted him, after you've made him Lord, after you believe that he died on the cross and was raised by the power of his father, he, he said, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. What does it mean to really be a Christian? It means that there is a realization uh, of the example of Christ himself as he makes his way up to Calvary's hill. Even though he is king of kings and lord of lords, he has elevated you and me far beyond himself. If everybody thought about somebody else in the same way that they thought of themselves, if everybody elevated other folk in the same way that they elevated themselves, we would have a different world. Christ was beaten and bruised not for himself but for you and me. As the hammer rang on the nails that pressed his hands against an old rugged cross, he was doing what he was doing 
for you and me. As his feet were nailed, they were nailed for you and me. As he was pierced in the side, he was pierced for you and me. As a crown of thorns was placed on his brow and blood and sweat dripped down his face, that was done for you and me. As uh, he forgave a dying thief who hung beside him, that was done as an example for you and me. As he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was not for him. That was for you and me. As he hung his head and gave up the ghost, commended his body and his spirit into his father's keeping and care. That was not for him. That was for you and me. Hung there, bled there, body broken and bruised, taken down and buried in a borrowed tomb. But three days later, early, he got up with all power in his hand. Power to make me walk right. Oh, you know. Power to make me talk right. Power to run when nobody's chasing me. Power to make me laugh when nothing's funny. Power to build me up when I'm weak. Make me strong when I'm broken. I wish I had somebody. The hymn writer who penned the hymn as it's listed in many modern hymnals remains nameless, but the words are timeless when they simply say, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. I want to be more holy in my heart. I want to be more loving in my heart because the hymn writer even understands that it can be faked in the mind and fake physically, but if it's in my heart, What does it really mean to be a Christian? Paul said, yes, in Romans, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. That Jesus is the son of God and that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. But then if you're gonna follow the principles of Christ and be defined as a Christian, he writes to the church at Philippi. And he says, at the very least, you need to value others beyond yourself. We give God praise for his word. God, we thank you right now for your goodness and your mercy, how you continue to shine upon us. You're gracious, you're merciful, you're loving, and you're kind, and we thank you for that. In the name of our Christ, we pray amen and amen. Well, you might be viewing and say, Reverend, I've heard what you've had to say and I feel ready to commit my life to living in the way that Christ has lived before us on earth. And beyond that, 
I would like to connect myself with the Calvary family. You might say I'm a Christian, I'm saved and I know it, but I don't have a church home. Well, Calvary would love to be your church family. You might say, Reverend, I was listening and it kind of makes sense now, I, I, but I need to know more. Well, the Lord loves a curious believer. He'll meet you right where you are. And we would love to be your church family. If that's you, give us a call at the church. Send me an email. Drop a line in the chat. Let me know. Reverend, I would love to be a part of the Calvary family. Well, the Calvary family would love to be a part of you. And we bless your hearts right now. God, we thank you for everyone who is viewing, both believers and those who are still searching. Give them light in this time of darkness, encouragement, in this time that may be concerning or depressing or confusing. Bring them joy in the way that only you can bring. We will be careful to give you the praise in the name of our Christ and our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I cannot thank you enough on, the, on behalf of the entire Calvary family. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope that you have enjoyed engaging in this time of worship and celebration. And I hope that the word of God has pricked your hearts, given you something to move forward on. And now I ask that you join me as we receive this benediction for it is now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne of grace. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless your hearts. I will see you next week. Oh yeah, that's a real good thing to tell. Yeah.